Okay, I'm recording. I'm recording. Okay, so okay, so this is um, so we'll do some drills. This is of the with the period. So the idea of this is that uh, so the first one is plot of the play period, tale of the dog period. Okay, here we go. Plot of the play, tale of the dog, back of the bus, soup of the day, page of the book, man of the house, head of the group, front of the store, fall of the year, side of the road, theft of the ring, right of the lane, end of the road, end of the trail, top of the world, close of the meal, loss of the team, run of the place, wife of the man, top of the line, rate of the tax, bike of the boy, trial of the case, fact of the case, nurse of the school, chief of the tribe, stem of the plant, head of the class, top of the glass, seat of the pants, judge of the court, back of the car, love of the job, feel of the ice, end of the term, fruit of the tree. Should we go with him? He shall be first to go. You should send for it. When shall we go? Should I come to school? Bill shall do his work. We shall see the play. The owner should fix that. Anne shall be the last one. They should accompany you. We shall see you then. You should see that it happens. I shall return some day. It should seem easy to you. They shall see the movie. Lee should talk to him. I shall not let you go. The cat should be put out. You should clean it up. I shall not be persuaded. You should not be unhappy. I shall not agree to that. You should join the effort. He shall be included. Was it here? It was here. It was in the car. Was it in the car? Was this here? This was here. This was in the car. Was this in the car? Was there a car? There was a car. It was sent. Was it sent? Was it given to her? It was given to her. This was here. Was this here? Was this given to her? This was given to her. There was a lake. Was there a lake? Was it on there? It was on there. It was over. Was it over? Was this on there? This was on there. This was over. Was this over? Was there a dance? There was a dance. Was it here? Was it there? It was here. This was here. Was it on the hill? Was this on the hill? Was there a hill? Was the hill there? Was it a cab? Was this a cab? Was it red before? Was this red before? It was red before. This was red before. Was it with him? Was this with him? Was there a man? Was the man there? Was this on Friday? Was it on Friday? Was it later? Was this later? It was later. This was later. Was it a red one? Was this one red? Was there one? Was the one red? Was the car here? Was this car here? Was it on time? Was there time? Was it on his way? Was this a hoax? Was there a leak? Was it at home? Was this a man? Was it left out? Was this ready? Was it on the road? Was there a hole? Was it a van? This was hard. There was not time for it. Was this difficult to do? Was the car there? Was it too late? Was there another? Was this hot? Was it late? It was on time. Was there a break? Was it with her? There was more. Was there a car? This was on the computer. It was not easy. Was this the one you called? This was too much. It was there. Was this a house? There was a sale. Was the cup broken? Was it on her foot? Uh, was this it? Was it said there was more? Was it on time? Was the car there? There was only one. Was there a clock? It was broken. Was this for him? There was a hole in it. Was it placed on the desk? Were you there? You were there. You were with him? Were you with him? You were in the room. Were you in the room? Were you calling her? You were calling her. You were sent home. Were you sent home? You were living there. Were you living there? You were in the car. Were you in the car? Were you here? You were here. Were you feeling well? You were feeling well. You were driving. Were you driving? Were you given the gift? You were given the gift. Were you called? You were called. Okay. All right. Let's go through this. Actually, let's try this. Um, let's go through it um, at uh, 245 to start with. Um, you can see, and then we'll do it at 225.
This will wake us up. Ready? Begin. Will you state your full name for the record, please? Mary Jane West. And where do you reside, Mrs. West? 205 West Mayflower. May I ask, please, for your age? I'm 47. What is your profession or occupation? I'm a service manager at Good Samaritan Medical Center, and I'm in charge of all the critical care units. And Good Samaritan Hospital is in Dallas, Texas, right? All right. For how long have you been employed by the hospital? 24 years this October. Are you a notary public in the state of Texas? Yes, I am. All right, Mrs. West, showing you what has been marked as. As exhibit one, do your initials appear on the first page of that document? Yes, they do. Referring you to the second page of that instrument, do your initials also appear there? Yes. And is that your signature on the third page of this document? Yes, it is. Let me ask you, referring to the date of the instrument, which is March 7, 2014, did you know Harry Robert Foster on that date? Yes, I did. Was Mr. Foster a patient in the hospital at that time? Yes, he was. And were you called to administer an oath and to acknowledge that document, his last will and testament? Yes, I was. Would you tell me, please? Please, how you came to be a witness and the person who acknowledged that document. All right, because I'm a notary for the critical care units, I am called to do all the notary work when I'm on duty for these particular units. The nursing staff notified me that day that uh, they had a patient, Mr. Foster, who needed a notary. And I went to his room, which was in the coronary care unit. I uh, take it uh, you have been called on to acknowledge documents like this many times before. Is that right? Many times. Does the hospital have any kind of policy for this uh, type of thing? When you are notarizing documents which are signed here in the hospital, I am under bond. The hospital pays my bond and I follow the rules as I understand them to perform a notary service for our patients. All right. Do you have any practice of looking at the patient's chart to see what medication has been given or how the patient is uh, before you make an acknowledgement? I personally do not look at the chart. I do ask the nurse in this case. Did you ask the nurse with respect to the condition of Mr. Foster before you acknowledge the document? Yes, I did. When you got to the room, do you recall what other persons were present at that time? There was a lady in the room with Mr. Foster. Also, because they had asked for witnesses, two other persons came into the room and they were from the nursing staff on the unit. All right. The names of Susan Hilton and Kathleen Harrington appear on the document. Would those be the names of the two people from the coronary care unit that were present? That's correct. Were you introduced to the other lady that was present in the room? I was. And by what name and how was she introduced to you? Personally, I do not remember. All right. Prior to the time that you acknowledge this document, do you have any recollection of how much time was spent in either discussing or reviewing or looking at this? Will, by any of the persons present, state that again, please. Let me just ask you a simple question. How long were you engaged in the business of signing this will? Do you remember? I was probably in the room no more than 15 minutes during that time. Did you engage in any conversation with Mr. Foster? Yes. And do you recall what was said by you and by him at that time? Mr. Foster asked me if I knew Bonnie Kennedy and he explained that we are her parents, suggesting that the lady in the room was her mother. Was anything else discussed? And I mentioned that I had been acquainted with Bonnie for many years and had worked with her on a unit several years ago. And the discussion went on as to what a delightful person she is that I recall. Did the other lady that was there in the room take part in the exchange between you and Mr. Foster? Yes. Do you recall what it was that she said? Actually, the conversation was between the two of them and myself in regard to Bonnie Kennedy and were the other two ladies, Mrs. Hilton and Mrs. Harrington, present at that point in time to your best memory. I do not recall other than that chat about Mrs. Kennedy. Do you recall what else you talked about with Mr. Foster at that time? Other than the usual questions that I ask when I go in, I ask the patient to identify himself. Was he able to do that? Yes. And I, as I look at the armband and usually try to observe reactions, and did you do that in this case? Yes, I did. And were you satisfied as a result of the things that you did that this individual was competent and able to sign that document? I was. Does the fact that you know Bonnie Kennedy affect you in any way as far as your testimony in this matter is concerned? No, it doesn't. I did not know that Mr. Foster was related to Bonnie Kennedy when I notarized the will. I see you learned that at some later point. Yes, uh, just after I notarized it, uh, was Mr. Foster in bed at the time the document was executed? He certainly was. Was there a modification? To the position of the bed. Was it rolled up? Was it flat or do you recollect? I believe the bed was slightly rolled up and did he use any kind of a clipboard or a pad or anything else on which to place the instrument before he executed it? Usually I give them my notary book and use it as a support beneath the paperwork and I'm certain I did it in this case. Remember that you did that in this instance. I really don't recall but that is my normal practice. If they are in bed they need something to support the document and so I use my notary book for that purpose on the 7th day of March 2004. 14. Then did Mr. Foster declare that this instrument exhibit one was his last will and testament? Yes, he did. Okay. 
Good morning, Melissa. Good morning. I was actually just writing in the chat box. Um, curious if anybody had a brief for notary. Oh, that's a good one. Does anybody have one? No, I don't. Okay, but so then until we can get one, um, actually, go no. really quick here. But I would, um, you know, really practice briefing on the fly, like coronary care unit. I mean, I would definitely, um, you know, come up with something, whatever is your go-to, but you need a go-to because I don't think you can pass these without one. Yeah, and, I've seen a brief on the fly, but then I was like, oh, there's got to be a brief, right? No, there is. You're right. And I just <laughs> looked in Mark's um, brief book and he doesn't have one, so... I'll look until, at the media and or my my whatever book it's still well early. maybe um maybe noter like n long o t check the r I was doing re but then that could be for anything right yeah that probably yeah like that just for to right now but I was like that could do literally be for anything so that could be somebody's name so that won't work right I like noter like note. R because it's like note and then R E note yeah. three. That's a good one too. Yeah. Okay. I'm going to stick with 225 and I'll do one minute and then I'll go back and add the next minute and do it like that. <clears throat> okay. Here we go. Will you state your full name for the record, please? Mary Jane West. And where do you reside, Mrs. West? 205 West Mayflower. And may I ask, please, for your age? I'm 47. What is your profession or occupation? I'm a service manager at Good Samaritan Medical Center, and I'm in charge of all of the critical care units. And Good Samaritan Hospital is in Dallas, Texas, right? All right. For how long have you been employed by the hospital? 24 years this October. Are you a notary public in the state of Texas? Yes, I am. All right. Mrs. West, showing you what has been marked as as exhibit one do your initials appear on the first page of that document yes they do referring you to the second page of that instrument do your initials also appear there yes and is that your signature on the third page of this document yes it is let me ask you referring to the date of the instrument which is march 7 2014 did you know harry robert foster on that date yes i did was mr foster a patient in the hospital at that time yes he was and were you called to administer an oath and to acknowledge that document that his last will and testament yes I was would will you state your full name for the record please Mary Jane West and where do you reside Mrs. West 205 West Mayflower and may I ask please for your age I'm 47 what is your profession or occupation I'm a service manager at Good Samaritan Medical Center and I'm in charge of all of the critical care units and Good Samaritan Hospital is in Dallas Texas right all right, for how long have you been employed by the hospital? 24 years this October. Are you a notary public in the state of Texas? Yes, I am. All right, Mrs. Weiss, showing you what has been marked as Exhibit 1. Do your initials appear on the first page of that document? Yes, they do. Referring you to the second page of that instrument here, your, your initials also appear there. Yes. And is that your signature on the third page of this document? Yes, it is. Let me ask you, referring to the date of the instrument, which is March 7, 2014. Did you know Harry Robert Foster on that date? Yes, I did. Was Mr. Foster a patient in this hospital at that time? Yes, he was. And were you called to administer an oath and to acknowledge that document, his last will and testament? Yes, I was. Would you tell me, please, how you came to be a witness and the person who acknowledged that document? All right. Because I am a notary for the critical care units, I am called to do all of the notary work where I'm on duty for these particular units. The nursing staff notified me that day that they had a patient, Mr. Foster, who needed a notary. And I went to his room, which was in the coronary care unit. I take it that you have been called on to acknowledge documents like this many times before. Is that right? Many times does the hospital have any kind of policy for this type of thing when you are notarizing documents which are signed here in the hospital. I am under bond. The hospital pays my bond and I follow the rules as I understand them to perform a notary service for our patients. All right. Do you have any practice of looking at the patient's chart to see what medication has been given or how the patient is before you make an acknowledgement? I personally do not look at the chart. I do ask the nurse in this case, did you ask the nurse with respect to the condition of Mr. Foster before you acknowledged the document? Yes, I did. When you got to the room, 
Will you state your full name for the record, please? Mary Jane West. And where do you reside, Mrs. West? 205 West Mayflower. May I ask, please, for your age? I'm 47. What is your profession or occupation? I'm a service manager at Good Samaritan Medical Center, and I'm in charge of all the critical care units. And Good Samaritan Hospital is in Dallas, Texas, right? All right. For how long have you been employed by the hospital? 24 years this October. Are you a notary public in the state of Texas? Yes, I am. All right, Mrs. West, showing you what has been marked as Exhibit 1. Do your initials appear on the first page of that document? Yes, they do. Referring you to the second page of that instrument. Do your initials also appear there? Yes. And is that your signature on the third page of this document? Yes, it is. Let me ask you, referring to the date of this uh, instrument, which is March 7, 2014, did you know Harry Robert Foster on that date? Yes, I did. Was Mr. Foster a patient in this hospital at that time? Yes, he was. And were you called to administer an oath and to acknowledge that document, his last will and testament? Yes, I was. Would you tell me, please, how you came to be a witness and the person who acknowledged that document? All right, because I am a notary for the critical care units, I am called to do all of the notary work when I'm on duty for these particular units. The nursing staff notified me that day that they had a patient, Mr. Foster, who needed a notary, and I went to his room, which was in the coronary care unit. I take it that you have been called on to acknowledge documents like this many times before. Is that right? Many times. Does the hospital have any kind of policy for this type of thing when you are notarizing documents which are signed here in the hospital? I am under bond. The hospital pays my bond, and I follow the rules as I understand them to perform a notary service for our patients. All right. Do you have any practice of looking at the patient's chart to see what medication has been given or how the patient is before you make uh, an acknowledgement? I personally do not look at the chart. I do you ask the nurse in this case? Did you ask the nurse with respect to the condition of Mr. Foster before you acknowledged the document? Yes, I did. When you got to the room, do you recall what other persons were present at that time? There was a lady in the room with Mr. Foster also because they had asked for witnesses. Two other persons came into the room and they were from the nursing staff on the unit. All right. The names of Susan Hilton and Kathleen Harrington appear on the document. Would those be the names of the two people from the coronary care unit that were present? That's correct. Were you introduced to the other lady that was present in the room I was and by what name and how was she introduced to you personally I do not remember all right prior to the time that you acknowledge this document. Do you have any recollection of how much time was spent in either discussing or reviewing or looking at this will by any of, <clears throat> of the person's presence? State that again, please. Let me ask you a simple question. How long were you engaged in the business of signing this will? <clears throat> Do you remember? I was probably in the room no more than 15 minutes during that time. Did you engage in any conversation with Mr. Foster? Yes. And do you recall what was said by you and by him at that time? Mr. Foster asked me if I knew Bonnie Kennedy and he explained. <coughs> Will you state your full name for the record, please? Mary Jane West. And where do you reside, Mrs. West? 205 West Mayflower. And may I ask, please, for your age? I'm 47. What is your professional occupation? I'm a service manager at Good Samaritan Medical Center, and I'm in charge of all of the critical care units, and Good Samaritan Hospital is in Dallas, Texas, right? All right, for how long have you been employed by the hospital? 24 years this October. Are you a notary public in the state of Texas? Yes, I am. All right, Mrs. West, showing you what has been marked as Exhibit 1. Do your initials appear on the first page of that document? Yes, they do. Referring you to the second page of that instrument, do your initials also appear there? Yes. And is that your signature on the third page of this document? Yes, it is. Let me ask you, referring to the date of the instrument, which is March 7, 2014, did you know Harry Robert Foster on that date? Yes, I did. Was Mr. Foster a patient in this hospital at that time? Yes, he was. And were you called to administer an oath and to acknowledge that document, his last will and testament? Yes, I was. Would you tell me, please, how you came to be a witness and the person who acknowledged that document? All right. Because I'm a notary for the critical care units, I am called to do all of the notary work when I'm on duty for these particular units. The nursing staff notified me that day that they had a patient, Mr. Foster, <clears throat> who needed a notary and I went to his room which was in the coronary care unit I take it that you have been called on to acknowledge documents like this many times before is that right many times does the hospital have any kind of policy for this type of thing when you are notarizing documents which are signed here in the hospital I am under bond the hospital pays my bond and I follow the rule as I 
understand them to perform a notary service for our patients. All right, do you have any practice of looking at the patient's chart to see what medication has been given or how the patient is before you make an acknowledgement? I personally do not look at the chart. I do ask the nurse in this case, did you ask the nurse with respect to the condition of Mr. Foster before you acknowledge the document? Yes, I did. When you got to the room, uh, do you recall what other persons were present at that time? There was a lady in the room with Mr. Foster also because they had asked for witnesses. Two other persons came into the room and they were from the nursing staff on the unit. All right. The names of Susan Hilton and Kathleen Harrington appear on the document. Would those be the names of the two people from the coronary care unit that were present? That's correct. Were you introduced to the other lady that was present in the room? I was. And by what name and how was she introduced to you? Personally, I do not remember. All right. Prior to the time that you acknowledge this document. Do you have any recollection of how much time was spent in either discussing or reviewing or looking at this will by any of the persons present? State that again, please. Let me ask you a simple question. How long were you engaged in the business of signing this will? Do you remember? I was probably in the room no more than 15 minutes during that time. Did you engage in any conversation with Mr. Foster? Yes. And do you recall what was said by you and by him at that time? Mr. Foster asked me if I knew Bonnie Kennedy and he explained that we are his parents. Uh, suggesting that the lady in the room was her mother, was anything else discussed? And I mentioned that I had been acquainted with Bonnie for many years and had worked with her on a several years ago. And the discussion went on as to what a delightful person she is that I recall. Did the other lady that was there in the room take part in the exchange between you and Mr. Foster? Yes. Do you recall what it was that she said? Actually, the conversation was between the two of them and myself in regard to Bonnie Kennedy and were the other two ladies, Mrs. Hilton and Mrs. Harrington, present at that point in time to your best memory, I do not recall. Other than that chat about Mrs. Kennedy, do you recall what else you talked about with Mr. Foster at that time? Other than the usual questions that I asked when I go in, I asked the patient to identify himself. Was he able to do so? Yes. And I look at the armband and usually try to observe reactions. And did you do that in this case? Yes, I did. And were you satisfied as a result of the things that you did that this individual was competent and able to sign that document? Last round. Will you state your full name for the record, please? Mary Jane West. And where do you reside, Mrs. West, 205 West Mayflower? And may I ask, please, for your age? I'm 47. What is your profession or occupation? I'm a service manager at Good Samaritan Medical Center, and I'm in charge of all of the critical care units. And Good Samaritan Hospital is in Dallas, Texas, right? All right. For how long have you been employed by the hospital? 24 years this October. Are you a notary public in the state of Texas? Yes, I am. All right. Mrs. West, showing you what has been marked as Exhibit 1. Do your initials appear on the first page of that document? Yes, they do. Referring you to the second page of that instrument. Do your initials also appear there? Yes. And is that your signature on the third page of this document? Yes, it is. Let me ask you, referring to the date of the instrument, which is March 7, 2014. Did you know Harry Robert Foster on that date? Yes, I did. Was Mr. Foster a patient in this hospital at that time? Yes, he was. And were you called to administer a note and to acknowledge that document, his last will and testament? Yes, I was. Would you tell me, please, how you came to be a witness and the person who acknowledged that document? All right, because I am a notary of the critical care unit. Units. I am called to do all the notary work when I'm on duty for these particular units. The nursing staff notified me that day that they had a patient, Mr. Foster, who needed a notary, and I went to his room, which was in the coronary care unit. I take it that you have been called on to acknowledge documents like this many times before. Is that right? Many times. Does the hospital have any kind of policy for this uh, type of thing? When you are notarizing documents which are signed here in the hospital, I am under bond. The hospital pays my bond, and I follow the rule as I understand them to perform a notary service for our patients. All right. Do you have any practice of looking at the patient's chart to see what medication has been given or how the patient is before you make an acknowledgement? I personally do not look at the chart. I do ask the nurse. In this case, did you ask the nurse with respect to the condition of Mr. Foster before you acknowledge the document? Yes, I did. When you got to, to the room. 
do you recall what other persons were present at that time? There was a lady in the room with Mr. Foster also because they had asked for witnesses. Two other persons came into the room and they were from the nursing staff on the unit. All right. The names of Susan Hilton and Kathleen Harrington appear on the document. Would those be the names of the two people from the coronary care unit that were present? That's correct. Were you introduced to the other lady that was present in the room? I was and by what name and how what was she introduced to you? Personally, I do not remember. All right. Prior to the time that you acknowledge this document, do you have any recollection of how much time was spent in either discussing or reviewing or looking at this will by any of the persons present? State that again, please. Let me ask you a simple question. How long were you engaged in the business of signing this will? Do you remember? I was probably in the room no more than 15 minutes during that time. Did you engage in any conversation with Mr. Foster? Yes. And do you recall what was said by you and by him at that time? Mr. Foster asked me if I knew Bonnie Kennedy, and he explained that, that we were, we are her parents, suggesting that the lady in the room was her mother. Was anything else discussed? And I mentioned that I had been acquainted with Bonnie for many years and had worked with her on a unit several years ago, and the discussion went on as to what a delightful person she is that I recall. Did the other lady that was there in the room take part in the exchange between you and Mr. Foster? Yes. Do you recall what it was that she said? Actually, the conversation was between the two of them and myself in regard to Bonnie Kennedy and were the other two ladies, Mrs. Hilton and Mrs. Harrington, present at that point in time to your best memory. I do not recall. Other than that chat about Mrs. Kennedy, do you recall what else you talked about with Mr. Foster at that time? Other than the usual questions that I ask when I go in, I ask the patient to identify himself. Was he able to do so? Yes. And I look at the armband and usually try to observe reactions. And did you do that in this case? Yes, I did. And were you satisfied as a result of the things that you did that this individual was competent and able to sign that document? I was. Does the fact that you know Bonnie Kennedy affect you in any way as far as your testimony in this matter is concerned? No, it doesn't. I did not know that Mr. Foster was related to Bonnie Kennedy when I notarized the will. I see. You learned that at some later point, just after I notarized it. Yes. Was Mr. Foster in bed at the time this document was executed? He certainly was. Was there a modification to the position of the bed? Was it rolled up? Was it flat? Or do you recollect? I believe the bed was slightly rolled up. And did he use any kind of a clipboard or a pad or anything else on which to place the instrument before he executed it? Usually I give them my notary book and use it as a support beneath the paperwork. And I'm certain I did it in this case. Do you remember that you did that in this instance? I really don't recall, but that is my normal practice. If they are in bed, they need something to support the document. And so I use my notary book for that purpose. On the 7th day of March, 2014, then, did Mr. Foster declare that this instrument, Exhibit 1, was his last will and testament? Yes, he did. <clears throat> Okay, how was that? It's all really fast for me, but it's good practice. But, but honestly, I was thinking, you know, part of, I think, achieving the high speeds like that is, is um, listening and getting used to just um, processing people who talk that fast. So even if you're in your car, and you're listening to this and you're not writing and you're just listening to this and you kind of try to surround yourself with, um, you know, taking a podcast and and upping the speed, right, um, to like a book or something. Like you yeah. just start surrounding yourself with that really fast, fast talking. Then you um, then you start to, um, you know, to like that's your world. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, you like start to process it. You're right. No, absolutely. You're right. So even I mean, you know, like, again, even if you're driving, um, you know, because you're on your way to work to something and you're just listening to this, just try to keep processing it and writing it in your head. And if you're writing it, of course, just try to get as much as you can. But that's a huge part of it, I think. OK, now for processing purposes, <laughs> let's do um, to. Um, 245 or 250. I, honestly, I don't even know what it is. I just know that it's not, too, that it's way over 225. Okay, here we go. 
Will you state your full name for the record, please? Mary Jane West. And where do you reside, Mrs. West? 205 West Mayflower. May I ask, please, for your age? I'm 47. What is your profession or occupation? I'm a service manager at Good Samaritan Medical Center, and I'm in charge of all of the critical care units. And Good Samaritan Hospital is in Dallas, Texas. Right. All right. For how long have you been employed by the hospital? 24 years this October. Are you a notary public in the state of Texas? Yes, I am. All right. Mrs. West, showing you what has been marked as uh, Exhibit 1. Do your initials appear on the first page of that document? Yes, they do. Referring you to the second page of the instrument. Do your initials also appear there? Yes. And is that your signature on the third page of this document? Yes, it is. Let me ask you, referring to the date of the instrument, which is March 7, 2014. Did you know Harry Robert Foster on that date? Yes, I did. Was Mr. Foster a patient in this hospital at that time? Yes, he was. And were you called to administer an Note then to acknowledge that document, his last will and testament. Yes, I was. Would you tell me, please, how you came to be a witness and the person who acknowledged that document? All right, because I'm a notary for the critical care units, I am called to do all of the notary work when I'm on duty for these particular units. The so nursing staff notified me that day that uh, they had a patient. Mr. Foster, who needed a notary, and I went to his room, which was in the coronary care unit. I take it that you have been called on to acknowledge documents like this many times before. Is that right? Many times. Does the hospital have any kind of policy for this type of thing when you are notarizing documents which are signed here in this hospital? I'm under bond. The hospital pays my bond, and I follow the rule as I understand them to perform a notary service for our patients. All right. Do you have any practice of looking at the patient's chart to see what medication has been given or how the patient is before you make an acknowledgement? I personally do not look at the chart. I do ask the nurse. In this case, did you ask the nurse with respect to the condition of Mr. Foster before you acknowledged the document? Yes, I did. When you got to the room. Do you recall what other persons were present at that time? There was a lady in the room with Mr. Foster also because they had asked for witnesses. Two other persons came into the room and they were from the nursing staff on the unit. All right. The names of Susan Hilton and Kathleen Harrington appear on the document. Would those be the names of the two people from the coronary care unit that were present? That's correct. Were you introduced to the other lady that was present in the room? I was. And by what name and how was she introduced to you? Person, I do not remember. All right. Prior to the time that you acknowledge this document. Do you have any recollection of how much time was spent in either discussing or reviewing or looking at this will by any of the persons present? State that again, please. Let me ask you a simple question. How long were you engaged in the business of signing this will? Do you remember? I was probably in the room no more than 15 minutes. During that time, did you engage in any conversation with Mr. Foster? Yes. And do you recall what was said by you and by him at that time? Mr. Foster asked me if I knew Bonnie Kennedy, and he explained that we are her parents, suggesting that the lady in the room was her mother. Was anything else discussed? And I mentioned that I had been acquainted with Bonnie for many years and had worked with her on a unit several years ago. And the discussion went on as to what a delightful person she is that I recall. Did the other lady that was there in the room take part in the exchange between you and Mr. Foster? Yes. Do you recall what it was that she said? Actually, the conversation was between the two of them and myself in regard to Bonnie Kennedy and were the other two ladies, Mrs. Hilton and Mrs. Harrington, present at that point in time. To your best memory, I do not recall other than that chat about Mrs. Kennedy. Do you recall what else you talked about with Mr. Foster at that time? Other than the usual questions that I asked when I go in, I asked the patient to identify himself. Was he able to do so? Yes. And I look at the armband and usually try to observe reactions. And did you do that in this case? Yes, I did. And were you satisfied as a result of the things that you did that this individual was competent and able to sign that document? I was. Does the fact that you know Bonnie Kennedy affect you in any way as far as your testimony in this matter is concerned? No, it doesn't. I did not know that Mr. Foster was related to Bonnie Kennedy when I notarized the will. I see you learned that at some later point just after I notarized it. Yes, was Mr. Foster in bed at the time this document was executed? He certainly was. Was there a modification to the position of the bed? Was it rolled up? Was it flat? Or do you recollect? I believe the bed was slightly rolled up. And did he use any kind of a clipboard or a pad or anything else? <clears throat> on which to place the instrument before he executed it. Usually I give them my notary book and I use it as a support beneath the paperwork. I'm certain I did it in this case. Remember that you did it in this instance. I really don't recall, but that is my normal practice. If they are in bed, they need something to support the document. And so I use my notary book for that purpose. On the seventh day of March, 2014, then did Mr. Foster declare that instrument? Exhibit one was his last will and testament. Yes, he did. Okay. I'm going to get a cough drop really quick. You rest your fingers. <laughs> okay. I'll read it one more time. And then I'll read back until it's quarter till.
Gary, is paperwork one word? Think so. Does anybody know right off the top of their head? Yeah, I think it is. It is. I think so too. And, and I write P A P long A K. Pink. Mm, that's, that's good and better. Yeah. All right. <clears throat> Here we go. Will you state your full name for the record, please? Mary Jane West, and where do you reside, Mrs. West? 205 West Mayflower, and may I ask, please, for your age? I'm 47. What is your profession or occupation? I'm a service manager at Good Samaritan Medical Center, and I'm in charge of all of the critical care units. And Good Samaritan Hospital is in Dallas, Texas, right? All right, for how long have you been employed by the hospital? 24 years this October. Are you a notary public in the state of Texas? Yes, I am. All right, Mrs. West, showing you what has been marked as Exhibit 1. Do your initials appear on the first page of that document? Yes, they do. Referring you to the second page of that instrument, do your initials also appear there? Yes. And is that your signature on the third page of this document? Yes, it is. Let me ask you, referring to the date of the instrument, which is March 7, 2014. Did you know Harry Robert Foster on that date? Yes, I did. Was Mr. Foster a patient in this hospital at that time? Yes, he was. And were you called to administer an oath and to acknowledge that document, his last will and testament? Yes, I was. Would you tell me, please, how you came to be a witness and the person who acknowledged that document? All right. Because I am a notary for the critical care units, I am called to do all of the notary work when I'm on duty for these particular units. The nursing staff notified me that day that... They had a patient, Mr. Foster, who needed a notary, and I went to his room, which was in the coronary care unit. I take it that you have been called on to acknowledge documents like this many times before. Is that right? Many times. Does the hospital have any kind of policy for this type of thing? When you are notarizing documents which are signed here in the hospital, I am under bond. The hospital pays my bond and I follow the rules as I understand them to perform a notary service for our patients. All right. Do you have any practice of looking at the patient's chart to see what medication has been given or how the patient is before you make an acknowledgement? I personally do not look at the chart. I do ask the nurse. In this case, did you ask the nurse with respect to the condition of Mr. Foster before you acknowledged the document? Yes, I did. When you got to the room, do you recall what other persons were present at that time? There was a lady in the room with Mr. Foster also because they had asked for witnesses. Two other persons came into the room and they were from the nursing staff on the unit. All right, the names of Susan Hilton and Kathleen Harrington appear on the document. Would those be the names of the two people from the coronary care unit that were present? That's correct. Were you introduced to the other lady that was present in the room? I was. And by what name and how was she introduced to you? Personally, I do not remember. All right, prior to the time that you acknowledged this document, do you have any recollection of how much time was spent in either discussing or reviewing or looking at this will by any other person's presence? State that again, please. Let me ask you a simple question. How long were you engaged in the business of signing this will? Do you remember? I was probably in the room no more than 15 minutes. During that time, did you engage in any conversation with Mr. Foster? Yes. And do you recall what was said by you and by him at that time? Mr. Foster asked me if I knew Bonnie Kennedy, and he explained that we are her parents, suggesting that the lady in the room was her mother. Was anything else discussed? And I mentioned that I had been acquainted with Bonnie for many years and had worked with her on a unit several years ago, and the discussion went on as to what a delightful person she is that I recall. Did the other lady that was there in the room take part in the exchange between you and Mr. Foster? Yes, do you recall what it was that she said? Actually, the conversation was between the two of them and myself in regard to Bonnie Kennedy and were the other two ladies, Mrs. Hilton and Mrs. Harrington, present at that point in time to your best memory? I do not recall. Other than that chat about Mrs. Kennedy, do you recall what else you talked about with Mr. Foster at that time? Other than the usual questions that I ask when I go in, I ask the patient to identify himself. Was he able to do so? Yes. And I look at the armband and usually try to observe reactions. And did you do that in this case? Yes, I did. And were you satisfied as a result of the things that you did that this individual was competent and able to sign that document? I was. 
Does the fact that you know Bonnie Kennedy affect you in any way as far as your testimony in this matter is concerned? No, it doesn't. I did not know that Mr. Foster was related to Bonnie Kennedy when I notarized the will. I see. You learned that at some later point, just after I notarized it. Yes. Was Mr. Foster in bed at the time this document was executed? He certainly was. Was there a modification to the possession of the bed? Was it rolled up? Was it flat? Or do you recollect? I believe the bed was slightly rolled up. And did he use any kind of a clipboard or a pad, anything on which to place the instrument before he executed it? Usually I give them my notary book and I use it as a support beneath the paperwork. And I'm certain I did it in this case. Do you remember that you did that in this instance? I really don't recall, but that is my normal practice. If they are in bed, they need something to support the document. And so I use my notary book for that purpose. On the seventh day of March, 2014, then... Did Mr. Foster declare that this instrument, Exhibit 1, was his last will and testament? Yes, he did. Okay. Read that back for a couple of minutes. Question. Will you state your full name for the record, please? Answer. Mary Jane West. Question. And where do you reside, Mrs. West? Answer, 205 West Mayflower. Question, and may I ask, please, for your age? Answer, I'm 47. Question, what is your profession or occupation? Answer, I'm a service manager at Good Samaritan Medical Center, and I'm in charge of all of the critical care units. Question, and Good Samaritan Hospital is in Dallas, Texas. Answer, right. Question, all right. For how long have you been employed by the hospital? Answer, 24 years this October. Question, are you a notary public in the state of Texas? Answer, yes, I am. Question, all right. Mrs. West, showing you what has been marked as Exhibit 1. Do your initials appear on the first page of that document? Answer, yes, they do. Question, referring you to the second page of that instrument, do your questions also appear there? Answer, yes. Question, and is that your signature on the third page of this document? Answer, yes, it is. Question, let me ask you, referring to the date of the instrument, which is March 7, 2014, did you know Harry Robert Foster on that date? Answer, yes, I did. Question, was Mr. Foster a patient in the hospital at that time? Answer, yes, he was. Question, and were you called to administer an oath and to acknowledge that document, his last will and testament? Answer, yes, I was. Question, would you tell me, please, how you came to be a witness and the person who acknowledged that document? Answer, all right. Because I am a notary for the critical care units, I am called to do all of the notary work when I'm on duty for these particular units. The nursing staff notified me that day that they had a patient, Mr. Foster, who needed a notary, and I went to his room, which was in the coronary care unit. Question, I take it that you have been called on to acknowledge documents like this many times before. Is that right? Answer, many times. Question, does the hospital have any kind of policy for this type of thing? when you are notarizing documents which are signed here in the hospital? Answer, I am under bond. Okay. Good morning. Always a good way to start the morning, right? Yeah. Have an hour yeah. and 45 minutes under your belt. So that's Pretty good. Tense. All right. right. Thank you. All right. Everybody have an amazing day. I'll see you sometime. Thank you. Thank you.